So welcome to Box and Guest. I'm Christina, and I am here today with one of my all-time favorite, favorite bands. This is Jam Steak. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Oh, look at them. Look how pretty they are. So we've got Dom, who's our drummer. We've got Rhino, who's guitar and vocals. And we've got Chard on bass. Yes, the guys, the men, the men behind the beef or within the beef or of the beef. <laughs> how you guys doing today? Meats and we are all made of meat. Yeah, we are the meats, meats pretty yes. much. Yeah. <laughs> you are the meats. I, 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 you know, I can't really argue with that on any level. But uh, so, yeah, so I wanted to, I know every single interviewer for every single band through the history of time has started with this question. But we got to get it out of the way, so I'm just going to ask it, all right? And just then we can start the really fun questions. So, okay, you ready? All right. So, in a fair fight, who do you think would win? Grilled cheese sandwich or a taco? And you have to explain your answer. Go. Who? Ooh, I mean, taco probably just because of the possibilities available. Cheese sandwich kind of limits you to cheese and bread, although there's really good cheese out there. Mm -hmm. And there's taco also that's true and you've got yeah endless po endless possibilities i like beef tongue tacos Ooh. i also like tongue tacos really nice. so, so i'm gonna have to say yeah. taco i think okay. i'm gonna well absolutely taco i mean you can throw sour cream on a taco this is true cream on a grilled cheese but it's not gonna be as good it's no mm, now weird aesthetic all right so we got two strong arguments for taco dami what do you think I mean, I'm going to go, I'd probably go taco as well. Uh, okay. really boring. You can really zazz the hell okay, out of whoa, a taco. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry, dude. It is, I'm taking a stand right here. Grilled cheese, boring. Okay. Now, well, wait a minute. This is. You can put a taco in a grilled cheese. Okay. What? That route. All right. So is that now a grilled, a grilled cheese or cheese is it a taco? You can put a grilled cheese in the taco. You'll smash the shell if you try and jam it in there. You got to put it there. Like there is size. I'm getting hungry. Okay. After this, we'll get, we can get tacos. All right. All right. We'll get tacos. <laughs> you, now you know what you have to do. You're Okay. Well, I mean, again, it's, I know it's an age old question. And you've probably answered it a million times and you're just bored already. But the, yeah, it's, it's a key thing. I'm, I'm going to reserve my, uh, my opinion. But I, I will say I'm a little surprised by the assertion that grilled cheese is boring coming from jam steak where you can put bacon well, and yeah, ham, also want to talk about a variety of meats of a sort. See, now Rhino, Rhino and I are vibing now. He gets it. See, he see he's starting to see the – I'm not saying I'm a grilled cheese girl. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then is that still a grilled cheese sandwich, though? Because yeah. once you start putting a bunch of stuff into it, doesn't it become like a bacon, cheese, and tomato? Or I mean, okay, uh, all right. You cheese. know, this is um. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, now that we've gotten the important stuff out of the way, so yes. <laughs> let's yeah. take it back a little bit. How did you guys meet? Like. Oh, we would meet or like actually. <laughs> How did you guys beef? That's my next question. If you had a fight at some point, <laughs> so we're all beefing at one point. No, we met in high school. Uh, oh, okay. At ninth grade, and yep. two years later, I was asked to join their their outfit that they had going on mm -hmm. uh, with another guitarist, and we did that for a while. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we've known each other for about so twenty years now. 20 years. Um, wow, very good. Cool. We've been jamming together for a, not that long. We took a pretty serious break in between. Um, but yeah, we were in a band in high school and we were writing songs. We had another guitarist at the time. And yeah, we just sort of disbanded, uh, stopped making music for a long time, had life. You know, I had kids, yep. we all yep. moved on with stuff. And uh, what, maybe like three years ago now, we, uh, we just were kind of started talking again, like, hey, would, do you guys want to play music again? Should, Let's should we get do the something? band back together. <laughs> it was exactly that. We all started having midlife crises. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, you're far too young to be having midlife. Have like third yeah. life crisis. We'll make it like a third life crisis. That's that's yeah, that's, that's okay. a little bit better. Yeah. Well, okay. So only three years. I wasn't actually even sure how long you'd been together. It's funny because yeah. you can tell from your music that you've been playing together a long time. I guess it just wasn't oh, yeah. all 
consecutive. So, yeah. um, so okay, that's really cool. So you've known each other a long time then. Yes. All right, so who is the most different from high school? Who's changed the most since high school? I would say Dom. Probably yeah. Dom used to have it probably is have, the, you know in the, it was oh, yeah. to appearance and, especially yeah and a side oh, yeah. some long yeah long trend, hair, trench coats dyed and, hair and oh, yeah. like okay that. so that you you had like a whole like Vince yeah. Neil in a trench coat kind of vibe going is that yes. what I'm hearing more like Manson in a trench coat back then <laughs> I had the long black bull cut big old gauges spike bracelets oh okay oh yeah no I, I was that. super cool let's just put it that way. One was time. and are. I mean, you can't fake that, you know, the level yeah, of cool we've true. got going here. I mean, the guys are shivering. You're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. My, now my new goal for this interview is to get you to spit that water out at least once. So I have, I have okay. my, I have oh, my so objective. Back to every time I go for a drink because I'm going to get something good. All right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'll just have to pull out like my sound effects card or something, you know. Um, so, um, and then you guys... Did you, so just to clear it up, you guys are a metal jam band, which, yeah. you know, for anybody who's not familiar, which I'm going to think is most people, because I feel like metal jamming is something that you guys invented. Well, so we how did that happen? Well, we became the uh, pioneers of jam core um, when we realized we were all pretty busy and we just wanted to make music. And the idea of kind of writing songs just, it took away a lot of the time to actually mm. play the song. So, I mean, like you said, we have a pretty solid dynamic amongst the three of us when we play. We can just sort of work off of each other pretty yeah. well. And Synaptic Convergence. Exactly. There's the song off of our first album called uh, Synaptic Convergence, which we kind of thought was a very Fitting. appropriate Yeah, song. yeah, absolutely. Well, and that, that's it. It's, and so, you know, because I've watched your, your live jams, Okay, mm -hmm. so those are generally things that you haven't done before. That's just something well, you're iterating as you go, right? Yep. So talk me through, I mean, I have sort of two parts of a question here. The first one is, how do you start just a jam? How do you start a song? You know, is it one of you finds a riff, one of you finds a beat? You look like you're as unsure about it as anybody. <laughs> You're like, well, we really don't know, but and so we'll start with that question because I'm 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 fascinated by this because you know jamming is an art in and of itself, but I think everyone has heard really good jam bands, mm -hmm. and then the other jam bands where you just want to jam a fork in your eye because it's just not working. And so since you guys are a really good jam band, how does that? You know, you're sitting there, the three of you are in the studio. It's time to go. What do you do? Somebody does something and then something happens. It's Usually is about how it works out. Pretty much that yeah. simple. Somebody might have thought of something. Normally Ryan will have some riffs that he's thought of during the week. Yeah. Okay. I try to stay in the mindset during the week leading up to it. But by the time I get here, it's all falling out of my head. So maybe we'll <laughs> start with something. It sounds groovy. Okay. Down we'll start with a drum beat. I'll come in with the bass. And before you know it, we're off and running. And yeah. then eventually we just maybe stop for a couple of minutes at a time and then we just repeat process. Yeah. Okay. And and I've noticed too that it's different who starts with each song. So mm -hmm. like, you know, you're saying okay, like, you know, you might have a riff in your head. Like so for example, um and I'll mention I'll we'll be mentioning it a lot um through the course of this interview, but you guys just released an EP today, right? So June 3rd, um, it'll be broadcast later than that. So, you know, by the time people are watching this, it will have already, you know, sold a million copies, gone oh. platinum, you'll be on a jet. Yeah, but so- We're Halfway there now. So, there's a little yeah. time capsule from before it just blows up, you know, like Madonna <laughs> level. Um, but so, um, you know, listening to the EP today, like Long Weekend, for example, with that song, there's a very distinctive riff that starts the song and kind of is a through line for the song. Is that something that you thought of, you know, in the moment? Was it something that you thought of, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. just what happened as the song was going. I mean, they, they really vary a lot. We... We have one song that's on SoundCloud that we we named it Satan because <laughs> it, uh, it starts as a very, like, kind of like California beach vibe to the song. And by the end of it, it's black metal. It so just rides it right just, into the black And it literally just yeah. kind of <laughs> just veers off <laughs> in that direction. So 
that's also how we come up with our song titles. We just literally, as we listen, we'll be like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then it, that's <laughs> that's it. So, As we all know, the best part about writing songs is naming them. Naming oh. them, right. It's like having kids, you know, not that much fun when you're feeding them, but naming them can be, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, well, I was going to ask you about your song titles because they are generally hilarious. I mean, there are some that are pretty straightforward, but nope. I opened the EP and I got to, okay, song number one, Titteral Liddies. And I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, this is definitely a jam steak album or jalbum. I know we're supposed to call it a jalbum, yes, but there you uh, go. so yeah, so that's something where I'm assuming that comes after the song. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you I'm sort of, you, you've does, played but... it. And then yep. you're listening, and the gestalt of the song leads you to a title like Titteral Liddy, okay. something like that. Well, <laughs> okay. I think Char named that one. And yeah, believe... it was paired with the other track, Metaphorical Mountains, which I think is just a way to say titties. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of wondering now if all the titles on the EP are actually mammary related, like... Is, you know, what? Frost on the Moor, you know, what's the Moor? I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, uh, really? we won't get into Salmon from a cannon <laughs> because really that's, that's, <laughs> that's fair. Yes, we have tool level uh, subtext in our site. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's, it's, metaphorical it's, mountains is we all have metaphorical mountains that we have to cross and get over but in I our lives. Them, but I thought of tits. <laughs> but he was thinking about <laughs> <laughs> and like the first and really like, why not both right i mean if we're if we're if we're, if we're being if we're being honest you gotta cross over at the time so you never know they are just huge boobs they're just <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i mean really i feel like if we were going to end the show at any point this, that would be the line to end on right, it, right huge then. boobs and then the whole thing fades out and then we're, yeah we're dying <laughs> what more could be said <laughs> so Okay, so yeah, so I, I was I was really interested with the song titles because they're always memorable, that's for sure. <laughs> and I mean that in a very good way. So so okay, so you've described how you are, you know, writing these, well, you know, or, or just performing these songs in the moment. But then how do you go from a spontaneous jam to recording an EP? Is it are these first takes? Are these things, yeah. do you record your rehearsal? So these are first takes. Mm -hmm. We record, okay. we do. Um, as you, This is our, our little studio setup. Our, I'm blocking the computer, but it's our <laughs> yeah, board. It's just, okay. um, just the basic, but yeah, we record everything we do and then we review it afterwards. And if it's cool, we're gonna keep it. We'll cut it, we'll find a nice end spot, nice beginning spot. Yeah. And send it on its way. I mean, so this, so this really is in effect a live album. Like these are oh, yeah. live albums that you're doing. So that's tr okay. So I wasn't sure if you okay. recorded and you heard something and you thought, oh, you know, this is it, and then we're going to take it and learn it. And but you guys are super well, existentialist, I guess. Yeah. It's just yeah. I mean, that's also another double entendre for the name of Jam Steak because we put all of the steak on the jam. If you think about it, you'd miss respell the word steak. You know, all the steaks are put specifically yeah. on our jamming. And yeah. I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. And I think it's kind of, it's a different way to do it. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of bands, they'll put out one album a year, mm -hmm. something like that, maybe less. I mean, in a year, we put out over 120 jams. Yeah. So it keeps it fresh. And granted, some of them aren't good. Like you said, there are some jam bands who you just want to jam a fork in your eye. And there's right. plenty of bounces where it's like, sure, I shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm it, and I like it. Gotta so you gotta, you gotta put something out. It's Wednesday. Gotta get it out. So. <laughs> That's it. The standards are what they are. We're just, we gotta put something out. So, but I mean, that, that's really fascinating though, because what happens if you're in the middle of something and it's really working and then when you try something and it just doesn't land? Is that where the song right before that is where it stops? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. Vic, even in the past few weeks, you know, we've had those times where it's just like, I don't know, you're about less than a minute in and somebody just stops. Like, I'm just not it. It's not it. That wasn't yeah. it. That wasn't I gotcha. It. Yeah. And do, are you usually... Up, but yeah. that was it. <laughs> are you usually all on the same page with that where you all can kind of feel that something isn't working in the moment yeah yeah you kind of look around and you see like i'll see ryan like kind of 
looking over at Chard like a laugh or mm -hmm. something's not happening. Someone's just like kind of not really into it. And it's, hmm. yeah, you know, I agree. Yeah, let's just stop. Let's start over. We'll, we'll try something different. I mean, that, that really is a synergistic thing that you guys have because, I mean, you know, I'm just from performing live, you know, and, and obviously not in, in a jam band, but, you know, you may have a moment where, you know, you're at the end of a song and somebody decides to throw in a guitar solo or a keyboard solo. And, you know, if one person's not feeling it, you just go anyway. <laughs> you just keep playing because, but you guys are really, you, I mean, what you have is fascinating. I mean, you realize that, right? Like, it's it's incredibly difficult to do what you do. Not so difficult, I think, as it would be if you weren't such good musicians. But, I mean, to be able to just sit there and keep coming up with new things and then to read each other. No, but look, I mean, it's true. And I, and I really, I um, just as a musician, I appreciate that because it's not easy to do that. You know, it's not easy to just create something spur of the moment. And I mean, I know for me, if I'm singing something and I'm trying to riff on a song that I've already done, sometimes I'm gonna try something that is not gonna work, you know? And, and you have a certain fearlessness, I think, that's required of you to just, especially doing this live. You know, you do every Wednesday, right? You're roughly, right. unless people have yeah. to cancel or whatever, you know, you've got your live jams. Happens, yeah. And you're just, you're out there, you're on display. <laughs> You got to think of something. I mean, have you ever, has the well ever gone dry on a, on a rehearsal? Sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So then, then what happens? As much. And you just, either we keep pushing through it and it's like, okay, well, we'll, or we'll shift maybe. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm not feeling this. And I'll just real basic something, just do something. But mm -hmm. some of those nights we just end. But yeah, and I mean, then we'll it's, go through what we have. And yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we might only have four, four jams on there. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we've got, we finish and we're all exhausted and we have like 12 to go through, but yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. So yeah. And then it sounds like you're okay with kind of discovering what you're going to do as you go, yeah. which is, yeah. I mean, that's the, you're not sitting there saying we have to do X number or we have to play for X amount of time. It's just, it's however yeah. long there's juice. And then when you're done, you're done. So yeah. That's pretty cool. So, I mean, you were talking about, um, you know, trying to sort of maybe think of riffs um, or, you know, whatever during the week. Who do you guys listen to that isn't you? Like, who, who, are, who are your influences? Who are you listening to now? What, what kind of music? I know, Dom, you're going to say Nickelback. I know it, but. Well, don't. <laughs> hey, you know, I never made it as a wise man. Um, <laughs> never and, made it as a poor man. Okay, fine. Oh I know, you can tell I was <laughs> done. I lost myself at that first line. That's all I had. I got nothing. But hey, let's not hate Nickelback. Apparently, they're really nice dudes. And I, I, I think that the hate of Nickelback at this point has become a meme. There is definitely worse music out there. There, there definitely is. Yeah, so we've radio. all heard, you know, yeah, we've heard worse. So, yeah. but so who do you listen to besides Nickelback? You know, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I have really been digging in a lot on these uh the indie kind of scene that we've been listening to i've been listening to honestly a ton of anger overdose um mm -hmm. on some team slicer lately yes i mean tall Warl is never a mistake to listen no. to they are just no, no uh, never. i have been listening to a little bit of madonna i'm not gonna lie okay um, recent or old school or more old school. I don't really dig the newer stuff. No, I'm the same way. I haven't heard a new Madonna song in probably 15 years. I didn't even know if she was making new music, frankly. So, okay. So you're in like the material girl, or are you more of a Vogue era Madonna? Pointy oh, metaphorical mountains or which, which Madonna are we talking about here? <laughs> I'm, more, I'm more like like a virgin era, the real early. Yeah. Okay. When she I was still so. in the helium chipmunk phase, right? Before she became oh, British. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's just loving it. Yeah. Oh, it's great. <laughs> okay. So we've got indie music and Madonna from Dom. Mm. All right. Mm. Who's next? Chard, what do you what are you listening to? Uh, I listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of hip hop, I think. Um, oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, like Aesop Rock. Um, oh wow, okay. Yeah. Um but I listen to a lot of Ween. I don't know if you know who Ween is. I do. I, I know I know at least one Ween song, but if yeah. gun to my head, I could not tell you what it is. But if uh, I heard it, I'd be like, ah, yes, that. So <laughs> yeah, I listen to Ween a lot. Um, I've been trying to get into the, to listen to the metal that these guys have been sending me and stuff. Um, uh, when we did the cyberpunk thing, I got into another band on that called Tomb Mold. 
that's really, really fucking good. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have uh, not heard of them, but okay. All right. We'll cool. skip it. I guess I'll give you a little background on it. So we do have one song on the first CD that was pr- written. We wrote a song on that one, and that's Humans Are Canceled. We did write that song. Okay. Oh, okay. So that wasn't, okay. That was actually planned yeah. and rehearsed and okay. Planned and, yeah, worked over and rewritten and rewritten and tried out and tried to make it clean because initially, so that song is currently on the game. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, oh, um, depths of insanity. My, we have a song beneath the depths, so it's like that's the one that comes straight to my head. But yes, depths sure. of insanity by Sloppy Joe Studios. I was going to ask, okay, because I know you guys work with Sloppy Joe Studios. So, all yes. right, so was, okay, that's the one that's on there. Okay, yeah, that song got on there, and uh, we had written it with the idea of trying to get it onto the cyberpunk game. So that was what he was mentioning when he said, "Yeah, cyberpunk. yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Try really to get it on whatever you can." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's just get it out there. And thankfully enough, you know, our buddies at AOD had mentioned that there was that game going on. It was like, shit, dude. I mean, yeah, that would be amazing. That's fun. Absolutely. That, it was designed for a video game. Let's get it into a video game, please. It's so, so smart. I mean, it, because, it, it, you know, as a gamer, I'm, I'm completely aware of how important the music is when you're playing something. You know, so if, you, if, you're, if you're playing like an FPS and you've got, you know, the carpenters on in the background. It's not going to oh, have the same. I like that. That might yeah. actually be kind of. Fun. You know, it, it might have kind of a John Woo quality. You know, where it's yeah. yeah. So I, I I feel you there. But no, the, I mean, and it's a great way to introduce your music to everybody, right? Because oh, yeah. yep. games are more mainstream than just you know you have to find a band, discover a band, listen to a band. So okay, very cool. I don't yeah. want you to think I forgot about you, Rhino, in terms of who you're listening to. So what what uh, what turns you on? Besides that beard, which is magnificent, by the way. Well, thank, mm-hmm. you. thank you. I've lately been listening to a lot of the same stuff we listened to for years, like Cradle Filth, Children of Bodom, Doth. Um, but the new Avenged Sevenfold album came out. I just listened to that. It's okay. really cool. It's really cool. And new Foo Fighters album is really good. Okay. Go wrong with the foo. Yeah. Yeah. D. Michael Bolton. (laughs) Really, Michael Bolton. I listen to him every once in a while, dude. A powerful voice, just yeah. He really does. (laughs) (laughs) If Michael Bolton was having a baby with Michael McDonald, I think that's that's where (laughs) Dom has left. (laughs) Dom, Dom is leaving the building. So, have you heard? Michael McDonald and the Lonely Island, the Captain Jack Sparrow song. No. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, that is amazing. That yeah. Is amazing. That is the moment when I realized that maybe, because I felt like in the 80s, 90s, all of Michael Bolton's life force was in his hair. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And for a bald dude, he had a lot of hair. Remember that? Like when it was like, there's almost nothing here, but then we've got, you know, like a, a Rapunzel situation. Right. You know, it all just sort of slipped in the back. <laughs> and then he cut his hair, and I was like, I don't know. Is this going to be like when uh, Bobcat Goldthwait lost all the weight and wasn't fun anymore? And, you know, it's like, so, but no, he has a sense of humor. He, Yeah, you work with the Lonely Island. You're okay by me. So, all right, so you've heard that one. All right, I'll have to find something else of Michael Bolton's to introduce that's you nice. to, which is a weird side quest for me, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, oh, what, yeah. I'm also, what I'm also getting is that even within the band – there's a lot of disparate musical influences that you guys are pulling from, which is probably right. part of why you can keep it fresh and spicy all the time because you're not all only listening to the same thing. So, I mean, like, as a bass player, Chard, like, is that really why hip-hop speaks to you? Is it, is it that really driving? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of that has to do with that. Yeah, I think a lot of the music that I listen to has, has powerful bass, mm. uh, even it's just like noise, you know, the low end is really like complex. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a big element of, of listening to hip hop is, is the really good bass. So who, who's your favorite bass player? If you had to pick one, are you going to say what everybody says? <laughs> Wait, what does everybody say? Well, we'll see Les- what he says first. Oh, well. No, it's not. My favorite isn't Les Claypool, but I figured everybody would say that. And I think okay. that I need to have like that sound a little bit, although Sometimes. he's way more proficient than I am. I would say... Um, fuck, 
that's a hard one. We really. didn't prepare it, for that. Yeah, I didn't really prepare you for know, that. You know, I mean, I sent you a list, a dossier of questions. I asked I for tuxedos. Say, you guys did not do anything. I <laughs> Little kayfabe, that's bullshit. No, you didn't. <laughs> I didn't see any of that. Excuse me. This is a jam interview, okay? That's I'm just <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did not send you any questions. I don't even know what I'm going to be asking until it falls out of my mouth. I much. asked you. I was like, is there anything you need? What do we got to do to get ready? You're like, nope, just show up. Let's do this. We're just going to have a great time. I'm and just messing with you, man. I'm messing with you. And now you have to think on the spot. And when do you ever do that? Not literally every time you play music, right? So, well, all right. If you don't have like a, a, a is, is there somebody that you just especially like? Doesn't have to be your yeah, absolute oh, you favorite. Know, I think uh, Chi Chang from the Deftones, I would say maybe is my is one of my biggest influences. He had a really cool sound that goes with metal guitar that mm -hmm. I think added like a really cool like layer to it. So I always that is think a that's really good it. answer. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so yeah, yeah, you guys are you guys are definitely you're very interesting. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna go around and do the same question now. Who wants to answer it next? Favorite guitar player or favorite drummer? Go for go for Mr. Greeter. Oh, Mr. Greeter. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite all times, uh, Lexi Laiho. May he rest in peace. I don't think that's a name I know. Uh, Actually, I know it's a name I don't know. Who is that? He's the front man of Children of Bodom, one of the bands I said they'd be. Okay. Favorites of them. They oh, make he's gone. Very, uh, classically influ influenced, like Mozart style and whatnot. Mm -hmm. a lot Especially of in their earlier days. It, it's uh, just listen to one of his solos these days and still bring it to your Yeah, back. total it's like extreme speed metal, like really fucking cool. Super very yeah, technical, cool. really yeah, good. Nobody, nobody does it. And the lead like singer. Him. Lead yeah. guitarist and lead singer. That was Oh, so awesome. okay. So kind of a role model then, because he's well, doing yeah. he was doing everything that you're doing. So okay. So do, do you you also say same thing with okay. Yeah. yeah. These all right. the biggest influences over all these years. Absolute goat of the guitar world for sure. Oh yeah. Okay, I have some more homework to do. I guess that's see, this is part of why I love being in this. You know, um, any part of the metal community now is just like I'm. Just I'm learning all this new music. I'm listening to all this new stuff, and you know, it's it's cool not hearing the same 15 musicians mentioned all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, Dami, you're up. So, favorite drummer. Man. Um. I'd say right now, uh, the I can't remember his last name, but Spencer from the band Arcspire is probably one of my favorite drummers right now. The guy is a machine. He is okay. like 350 BPM or higher at all times. Just an absolute beast. And he's, I'm yeah, tired of just never, thinking about it. <laughs> you check it out. I could never touch what he does. But as for probably biggest influences, it would be Matt McDunhall from Mudvayne and Chris Adler from oh, Lamb of God. Okay. And now we have some answers we want to change. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a we'll 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 sort of uh you know we'll we'll disperse the answers among all three of you and assume yeah. that you all you all kind of like the same similar. music. Yeah, I mean we, we listen to the same stuff in high school. Yeah, we yeah. all went to concerts together. Yeah, we still yeah, do we so. cranked it out. I mean the first the first song I ever tried to play was the song <laughs> uh, Not Falling by Mudvayne. And this I is that. yeah, trying on my stepdad's drum set. In between, uh, during commercials, when uh, the shows are playing, <laughs> my parents are like, okay, you can play now. It's like, okay, how do I get it? <laughs> it's just doing it so shitty. And then eventually, okay, we'll move the drum set to the basement. So now I can right. play. Uh, you can play more than like for two minutes and 30 seconds every 15 yeah, right. minutes. Yeah, that's a handy That's a handy way to go. So. Yeah. It works it's, out. Okay, so that that's uh that that's I guess we got a little additional backstory on you just learning to drum between commercial or, or during commercials. I like that. That's uh you're gonna have to come up with a themed EP for that now. You just call okay. it, you know, well during this, this commercial break or something. <laughs> we had talked about it for a little while trying to make music for commercials because we realized that was also a very large market and jingles. Yeah, make just making jingles, little metal jingles that they could play on different like reality shows and stuff like that. So that was part of our theory too. We had talked about that, but. That is a very interesting, I'm just imagining like watching TV like, and all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> you know, like it's just. <laughs> Whoa. Did you didn't know I could do that, did you? Yeah. No, no I didn't I know that. Wow. <laughs> I just have a pedal. 
I just put the foreman on. No, that wasn't me. <laughs> See, and that that's something I actually wanted to ask you about, Rhino, is that one of the things that I, you know, because as a singer, I'm always worried about my vocal cords. You know, I've had hemorrhages before. I've blown them out. And I know that for, you know, I'm not going to call it singing. It's more intricate than that. I think vocalizing the way that you do. I know there's a whole art to it. So, you know, and, and a lot of times I've asked a bunch of people, you know, how do you do that? and not just blow your voice out. And nobody really seems to be able to answer. So if you can't answer either, I will totally understand. But how did you learn to do it? Like, how did you realize you could? Did you have to train? Kind of, how did that come about? I realized I could just by like doing it. And <laughs> I started doing it. And it was okay. like, hey, it just doesn't sound half bad. So then I worked at it a little bit. I didn't do it exactly the proper way at first either. Okay. Like a lot of the kind of yelling it style where you don't want to be yelling it. You want to, no. you want to make it come from your diaphragm. And, okay. You know, like a good, a good warm up really helps, especially if you got, uh, if you know how to do like the throat singing kind of, uh, oh, wow. uh, yeah, okay. uh, that's essentially exactly what <laughs> <That's> so cool. <laughs> that's when you're just manipulating your vocal cords in different yeah. in certain ways and your Th tongue, and the way you hold your mouth really okay. uh, affects it all, too, what kind of sound you're going for. You can get that sound like you're screaming into the toilet bowl. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's and who among us hasn't done that at some point in our lives, right? We're oh, always... okay. I have a video of Tom <laughs> screaming into the toilet bowl. He does. In the studio, in fact. Yeah, we did through. the one chip challenge. Yeah, we, we did the one chip challenge a year ago, and it didn't. Oh, happen. no. Yeah, it was rough. Those are still on YouTube if you want to dig out and find them. They're there. They're, I'll they're try there. to do that either way before or way after I've eaten. <laughs> yeah, oh, that part's not on there. No, we didn't add oh, this. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's just the challenge part. Okay, I misunderstood. I didn't know how much of it you recorded. That can be for your own library later. Yeah. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so, okay, yeah, so <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you guys had alluded to it, and it, it was something that I wanted to ask you about, too, is the, the way, and it makes sense to me because it is a jam. It's something that you're coming up with in the moment. But your songs do tend to start in one place with one vibe, with one, you know, kind of not idea because that sounds very limiting, but, you know, sort of one aesthetic. And then it's really interesting to me, especially listening to, and I mean, again, we're going to shout it out, Extra Plate, the EP that came out today. Listening to that sort of just straight through, I, I noticed more that, you know, I was, you know, thinking to myself like, oh, okay, so, you know, like Frost on the Moor, kind of starts out more of like this 80s kind of hair metal. It's got like a lighter tone. And then it just, and I think that's a good thing, by the way. But if you're in soul, but I think that's a good thing. But, and, and then it, it, it's, you know, because it, it's coming off of Metaphorical Mountains, which is, you know, like all this distortion, all this feedback, you know, kind of like this dirty, sludgy kind of. And then, and then so I'm going, oh, wow, okay. So now we're in more like an 80s feel. And then by the end of the song, it had completely changed into something that sounds much more current, you know, much more something that you might, you know, turn on a metal station on Sirius or whatever and like hear it on the radio. Like, do you guys have, and, and I, you know, I, it's, I guess it's, it's sort of a different way to ask the same question, but specifically around, you know, the, the vibe of the song, the tempos, the time signatures, the rhythms, everything can change so much when you're playing. Do you have any sense that that's going to happen? And how do you all keep up with each other when you do that? I think we've. I think that comes with playing for so long together. Mm -hmm. We can kind of sense the timing of when somebody's thinking, okay, this is when we're going to change it up. Or just like within the first like beat of the next you know part or whatever, mm -hmm. we can say, oh, okay, this is where he's going to go. Mm -hmm what I'm doing can either work or it won't. And I mean, all the time I'll play something when he changes and I'm like, oh, it doesn't work. So you Let's... can hear it in the songs if, you know, the bass was that loud. Right. Uh, you would hear those those mess ups. But we just... We'll call know. them transitions. <laughs> we'll just call them transitions. Because, I mean, really, that's what they're... Because what you're, what you're telling me is that you all just listen to each other. Yeah, you know, and, and you have a feel... That's, yeah. It's that synaptic convergence and chemistry. Mm -hmm. We've... We've always had that kind of chemistry, even mm -hmm. in high school, too, just kind of jamming along. We just kind of, I think we all have subtle signals that mm -hmm. we 
sort of send as we're playing, like I'll hear Ryan changing something up and it's like, okay, time to change. And then it's that moment. And I, I don't know if you remember the meme, but it's like that second where you have no idea what you're about to do. And it's like <laughs> that moment is constant. And that's why yeah. like, I don't, I don't make good face when I play drum. It's just <laughs> focus, pay attention. What am I yeah. going to do? And yeah. Yeah. The, the signals are kind of where we, we figure out when to change. And okay. sometimes it is absolutely uh, malicious on my part. I'm not going to lie. Um, sometimes I will absolutely try to fuck with these guys and switch stuff up just to, just to do it for fun. Yeah. You can see it sometimes. I will look, and there's a little smile. And it's like, okay, this is going to be fun. And then it's just... Bleh, and <laughs> I refer to that as shit goblin mode. When you go into shit goblin mode, that's yeah, that that's that's what the, that's where you're going. So you've decided that you're gonna mess with them out of love, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, so so is Dom the only one that decides to screw around like that, or do you guys ever uh, get revenge? We we'll we'll do it sometimes, I guess. I don't know. It's not, sometimes it's not always a conscious thing, but it's like you feel yourself starting to do a little of the wrong thing and you're like this isn't working so you just get big bat yeah it's true yeah. What? What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. it's a jam band everything is is correct right <laughs> like you can't it doesn't matter it's, it's, it sounds good it's good that's all that yeah, matters that's right. yeah well that's like that's like what do they say uh you know if it's only a wrong note if you don't do it twice <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> so you hit the yeah. wrong note, you hit it again. Now all of a sudden, you've you've intended it. That's the uh, that's the that's <laughs> the way of it. No, I've definitely so, seen times where these two will be looking at each other and like doing the similar to what we were just doing, but like trying to play it a little bit more goofy. Probably to catch <laughs> my attention, like, dude, we're we're done. We want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more of a musical cry for help at that point yes, than yeah. I, yeah, okay. I gotcha. Dom has a hostage situation and the guys are just please we don't want to do this anymore so I mean, we we wanted to play a video of yours um so i mean there are so many great songs on the ep but um this do you guys want to talk a little bit about long weekend and uh you know what you what you did here, how it came to be, why you chose this video specifically. Yeah, all right, here we go. You ready? This is a big one. This is a big okay. backstory for this one. So that song we picked it because I found the original video scrolling through old Facebook videos of ours, and I like that song, so I decided to make a video of it. <laughs> there you go. Um, wow. Yeah. I didn't. I did. I was. Ex I don't know what I was expecting, but I don't think it was that. <laughs> you set me up on a, on that. Okay, so you found it and you liked it, and and well, here it yeah. is, and and that's the video. So, um, okay, so do we want to roll that now? Let's go for it. All Let's right.
such a great video. And, and, and one of the things I wanted to mention about you guys, and it's, it's one of the things that made me fall in love with your band and your music, and because, you know, I'm a little bit wacky myself, is that there's so much of a sense of humor in what you guys do. And, you know, one of the things with our band that we say all the time is we take our music, but not ourselves seriously, right? And so I get the yeah. same sort of vibe from you guys. You know, you're excellent musicians, you're, you're doing what you need to do, but you're not feeling self-important, you're not. And so things like the captions, all that, and it, and it brings me to, you had to know I was <laughs> going to mention it. You had to know I was going to mention it. Um, so you had a video that came out um, late oh, April, oh, early May, yes. I think, right? Called Black Punk, right? So mm -hmm. this was this was the big, this was this was the Marvel movie level cinematic experience. There was yeah. a shoot. There was a director. There was money. Oh, there was probably all scantily all clad movies. women. You know, oh, just God. yeah, just sort of scantily oh, clad charred. I don't know. Like I wasn't there, I but had, during the filming was amazing. It was there. Oh. He goes. Uh, craft services. It was like a, a five thousand dollars. Right, but just the mac and cheese, right? That craft services, yeah. But, that was uh, services, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But so, okay, so um, I'm I'm all excited. I have this the video on YouTube saved, ready to load. You know, I'm 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 getting ready to watch, and I'm watching the thing, and I'm like, this is really cool. He wakes up, he doesn't know where he is, he's wandering around. You know, the song is great, right? So the song on its own. I would say it's probably one of your most recognizable, at least to me. Um, and, uh, and so I'm watching the video, and then we get to the scene, okay? And for those of you who've been paying attention, um, and I will not consider you lascivious if you've noticed, you might have noticed I am wearing a jam steak shirt. Now, there is a bit of a story to this, which I won't go too into because the interview is not about me, but I love this band so much that I wanted merch, and there isn't merch yet, although I have the feeling that may change because I'm going to we'll open your mind meld you. Right. Yeah. So I made a shirt. And the reason I made this shirt, and this is where it is, okay, you probably can't quite see it, but it's if you know, you know. And, you know, there's this image here. So this is the <laughs> scene, okay? <laughs> and for anyone who's seen the Black Punk video, you know exactly yes. why it had to be this on the shirt. But... Talk me through the scene. <laughs> and for, for anybody watching this who has not seen the Black Punk video yet, pause this interview. Uh, okay. Go to YouTube, look up Jam Steak, <laughs> go to the video section and pull up the Black Punk video and watch it through and then come back because you will enjoy the rest of this conversation way more if you've already seen it. Talk me through the moment. <laughs> the moment. Well, <clears throat> We, get, <laughs> we were doing these takes for a good while already. I had already run more than I had run in the past, like, five, ten years combined. Right. Yeah. And I was I was on a good jog through the woods in my backyard there, and I was going to use one log as a launching platform to just, like, get a good boost forward, you know? Right. It was totally rotten. I immediately went right through oh. and it down. <laughs> and I just got right back up. I was like, did you get that? And he's like, I sure I did. Sure you keep did. going. Yeah. Keep going. So <laughs> just kept going. Eventually, came upon this other log that was in the way. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> with this one. Slow down. All right. So yeah. I, he had to test it first. He had to jump over yep. so he can get on to the side to get the shot. And That's right dedication. Right. Okay. <laughs> I had to keep he my boy one, safe after took one, for the, you know, took one for his boy. After watching that horrendous accident he had just had, I couldn't I couldn't go through that again. I couldn't no. do it. No, so. you have to save the talent. You can't. You can't as the director, you can't uh, you can't risk the goods like that. I mean, Whoa, you know. I see this? You think I want this to get hurt? He could have just busted open like a piñata but not with good candy inside and it would have been terrible. Terrible. Yeah, the children would have screamed. You don't, yeah. you don't know what's in there. You don't know. I, I have. A, I have a vague sense. I did take biology in school, but yeah. I know at least some of it. Let's 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 okay. leave it to the hypotheticals. But so so was the was the direction then? Okay, when you go over this particular branch, be careful. And did you exaggerate it, or was that just? How did that happen? Because it's it's such a great and the fact that you stop the music. <laughs> 
is genius to me because it, it look, what, you're a musician, you make music, you make videos, you want people to talk about your stuff. And I mean, we watched the video on our Absolute Clown Shoes podcast and I had seen it and Greg had seen it, but Frank had not. Right. And even having watched it and shown it to people like four or five, six, seven times by that point, Every single time we played it, we were legitimately just belly laughing because it would have been funny enough if the music had kept going, yeah. but you stopped. Who came up with that? That was so brilliant. It really was. That yeah. was you, Dami. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> During the, when I was doing the editing of it, I had it coming and I was like, it, it hit right around that spot where uh, the Tom roll came to an end and there was a good pause in the music. So I was like, okay. That just feels right. If I take that spot and I just break that open and I move it back a little, we're going to keep the original audio. And it's just, I think this is going to be perfect. And then the second his foot hits the ground, we're going to start back up because he's safe. He's made it over the branch and he can move on. So, oh, it was. No, it, it's, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen on video, literally, because you're not <laughs> expecting it at all. And it just, I mean, you know, we, we talk about the video a lot, I mean, in our house, um, you know, and I mean, we even showed our kids and oh, they were like, yes. you know, why are you making me watch this video? And I was like, no, really, trust me. And it got to that part. And like, even with teenagers who don't want to be smiling, they were like, you know, like even they yeah. had to admit it was funny so i mean it's just it's such it was just it really chef's kiss on that one that was a that was a great moment and i'm telling you you got to make the merch and you got to make these shirts because people will buy them they they need have you named the branch by the way did you save it is it like bronzed in your there. studio it's still there i mean you little, never know little, little brendan is Still Brent, sitting there, just waiting Brent, for his Brendan. Brendan, <laughs> Brendan, yeah, Brendan the Brendan the Branch. Okay, Brendan Branch. I like that. Could end up in the Metal Hall of Fame one day, guys. You gotta go back and get that branch. You know, someone's gonna take it and sell it on eBay, and you're out profits. That would be a good decoration for the studio. Actually, it would be a, the branch. That this is what I'm saying. Bronze it or something, and hang it on the Bronze. wall. And <laughs> yes, we're gonna have a giant. 250 pound bronzed branch. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> Look, I'm not an interior decorator, okay? I'm just spitballing here, but it feels like it would be a good addition to this. Just think about it. Think about it. I will. <laughs> okay. We'll mull it over. We'll see. No, but serious. So, I mean, you know, um, you know, again, you have a bunch of how many um how many albums, EPs total do you have out besides Extra Plate? Well, uh, there's two total um, that are pretty much world, like, I guess, worldwide would be Chef's Choice was our right. first one that we put out at the beginning of the year. And right. now Extra Plate would be the second one. So, yeah, two. We got two. Okay, right. no, that's good. And then, as you said, you have a ton of jams online on YouTube. Yeah. And yeah. you Last. guys don't have a website yet, right? No, we do not. No, okay. we've discussed it. Yeah, we're uh, we're in the process of getting the the QR code worked into the logo of the band. <laughs> okay, yes. I like we did, it. Uh, just made us a card um, with the QR code, so I just have to get that QR code from them, yeah, and then we'll we can put it bring it to a link tree with all of our things. So we have yeah, a link excellent. tree. Yeah, we do have a link tree, yeah, but yeah. Okay, so we'll get the the info on that, the details for you on that one. Yeah, yeah so. we'll we'll make sure that we uh, we put that, you know, in our little uh, Chiron and uh, people can oh, go sure. and look you up. And at the very least, again, you're you're on Facebook under Jamstake, you're on YouTube under Jamstake, you're 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 you know on Spotify under Jamstake. You're pretty much everywhere under Jamstake. You're We're just trying. you're Jamstake worldwide. Yes. Worldwide. Prestige worldwide. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all day here at the studio. Uh. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it just, it, you know, in wrapping up a little bit, um, or wrapping up a lot even, is there anything you guys are especially, you know, excited about, want to make sure you shout out besides the EP, anything that's in the works? I mean, I, there's probably always something in the works because you guys are always making new music, but is there anything specific that you wanted to mention besides the extra plate EP? Out well, there? as a band, is there anything you guys think you want to mention i mean i i don't know if we've really discussed it but i think you guys have both been receptive if we're going to be playing some shows we've talked you know, about in it the new yeah. wow right? okay 
Exactly, but I mean, there's a lot of bands in the in the Minneapolis Minneapolis area. I imagine, yeah. <laughs> that you know, yeah. local that, and, and it doesn't have to be the same. You know, not you know jam bands or whatever, but just no, different. Yes. Kinds of people, and they all come together and play shows. Oh, yeah. I've seen some bands in the past six months that I'm like gotta play a show with those guys yeah it seems like they maybe you have- put together a little festival you know you you, yeah. you know i mean it's a lot of work but yeah we could a have a little barbecue mill you could are- with some meat or beef perhaps some oh, the tongue tacos i don't know you know it's oh, uh, oh yeah oh I will yeah. do it. Do it. It's a meal, yeah. It's I was going to say, you could also put tongue in your grilled cheese, but there's so much wrong with that. And as a phrase, as a concept in general, it's just tongue let's pretend it never happened. Yeah, and tongue in a taco is okay? <laughs> well, I, I mean, mean, <laughs> I mean, it's always okay with me, but I mean, I mean, we don't have to, we don't yeah, have to no. get into that, but <laughs> my lord. Hey, you but, uh, <laughs> Hey, if you guys say you like tongue in a taco, who am I to argue with you? You know. That's- <laughs> so one more question I have before um, our last little bit here. What? Oh wait, is- hold on. Oh, oh. There's, there's ooh. one thing. Yeah, stop. Tell me, collaborate oh. and list it. Yes. I think there's there's one thing we do have several things that we are kind of dealing with, but they're kind of on the DL. But there's okay. I will say is the there's a super group that has been formed. Amongst a few of us indie bands, um, there is a pigeon involved. Mm-hmm. There's a chair. There is an alien. There's okay. An angry individual. <laughs> and a there persona. is a meat. Um, yes. So there's a little super group um, called Zealots, I believe is the pronunciation of it. Yeah, and it you is, got it. Yep. Narok, Death Pigeon, Anger Overdose, Encircled Throne. I think that's it. Was that and five? you guys, <laughs> and us, I guess us too, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's going to be coming out here after a little while. So we're working on something and, that uh, cannot be bad. That just can't well, be bad at all. I mean, that, that's band. that's a great grouping yeah. of people. Yeah, great good. bands. How how uh, are you at liberty to share? You know how far along in the project you are? Is it still sort of at the beginning? Or? Well, it's it's like my. Uh, my grandpa used to say, if you take a bicycle pump and you leave it out overnight, next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, grandpa God. was a philosopher and a Great. scholar. I like it. <laughs> and really, who can argue with that kind of logic? You know, I yeah, mean, seriously. it's you true. Can't. If you do, no. next question. Next I question. Mean, move on. Yeah. If I had a dollar for every time I said that, I mean, yeah. I would have... Yeah, I would need to give somebody a dollar. I guess. Yeah, that would, I'm gonna have to. Yeah. I'm gonna have to roll that into my everyday uh, vocabulary now. Okay, I like it. So, Thanks. all right, that that's a that's a that's a very good teaser for the supergroup for zealots. Um, so we will keep an eye out on that. Um, I ca- I can't wait because I I know all of those bands. I love all of those bands. So if you guys are gonna do some sort of awesome band Voltron, can't be bad. Can't be yeah, bad. Right. And we actually will be uh, doing some work with a belly dancer coming up in about a month or so. Oh, yes. So that's going to be pretty fun. Um, yeah. So that'll, uh, that'll be coming too. Uh, she, yeah. She's been a friend of ours forever. Um, okay. Should we just say? You can tell yeah. Okay. Yeah. So her name is Dom Locke. Um, okay. She's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. She's all over the place with a bunch of different Great dances. Work. She's amazing. amazing she has also been our friend since high school. Um, yeah, should, that should be a lot of fun too. So that'll be, I think we're supposed to be working on that maybe in the next month or so. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Jam steak and belly dancing. That seems oddly perfect. <laughs> Those two things together. I, it's, it's sort of like, you know, like, you guys are kind of like the band version of Jack Black, where it's like, I could see Jack Black doing literally anything. You know, just like walking around and like on a spaceship somewhere with like corn chips on his fingers going, beep, beep, and I'd be like, that is so Jack Black. You know, jam steak, it's, it's the same kind of thing. You guys could literally do anything. You could 
do puppet versions of yourselves swimming oh. somewhere. Oh, in oh, stop that. Oh my God. How do you keep doing this? Um, it, <laughs> oh, I hate you. Oh. I've, I've got the ingredients for making puppets at my house and working on it right now. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you call them ingredients. <laughs> it, it, it does beg the question of what, what exactly you're making, but okay. I don't, I don't, I think I'm just so <laughs> in the jam steak ethos. Dude, dude. That You're I just convergence. You. That's you've, it. I'm part of the synaptic convergence. That's it. It's maybe okay. I'm just spitballing here. I did listen to the EP today. Maybe if I play it backwards, it's like you were being puppets. You don't know. Maybe. Like I'm, not, I'm not saying anything. Hey, maybe, but, maybe if we play our songs backwards, I might actually be saying real words. Hey. <laughs> That's a good. There's a good chance of that. Yeah. Hey, you know, if you play your songs backwards, you could probably put on another EP like next week. Just <laughs> play them backwards, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, hey, as I always say, you know, if you leave a bicycle pump out in the rain, you know. Yeah. Next well, question. <laughs> next question. Next, next question. question. Next. Well, speaking of the next question, um, I wanted to just ask because I feel like you guys have to have something. What is the funniest or craziest thing that has happened to you as a band? Besides the branch incident, obviously. Do okay. you have anything from high school, from now? Uh, the craziest oh. thing that happened to us, I would say, was probably when we went and took... Uh, I don't know if you're talking Monticello. Yeah. Or Montevideo. Mon Mon yeah, we played a show. <laughs> we played a show out in the middle of nowhere in Minnesota. We took a hearse to use as our loading van. Yeah. We got okay. to take a hearse out there because my friend's dad, our friend's dad sells hearses. Yeah. Or whatever. So we okay. took that out there. And anyway, a bar fight at the place we went, we were playing, a bar fight spilled out against the hearse, and we were all like trying to get them away from it because mm -hmm. we didn't own any part of that hearse. <laughs> Yep. But yeah, a bar fight in the middle of nowhere in Minnesota spilled up against our fucking hearse, but we were the coolest <laughs> people there because we showed up. We in showed hearse. up in a big showed black a hearse. hearse. And we were also the only metal band at a rap show. So that was also a really <laughs> oh, funny no, fact. Uh, the people after us, the Cowboys from Hell, they oh, were they a were Pantera metal. cover band. Oh, they were okay. really good. They were really good. I How forgot did that, that happen? How did I, you end up? We, we, you don't we, know. Headliners too, like at the end of the night, it was like yeah. midnight, oh, one o'clock or something. Like Abby, Eleven and yeah, and, that didn't she? Yeah, yeah. yeah she we had a man manager. manager at the time whose dad had the hearse, but mm -hmm. that was that was cool because that was a fun, fun trip fun. and yeah. there was camping and stuff and uh, oh, yes, and a hearse. That God, I think just vomiting. Yeah, there was yeah, a couple of times of that. Some. <laughs> I think that was the not early one of our shows, shows, but at the mud at a mud show. show, I projectile vomited water in front of everybody Out before we met the band. <laughs> Into the garbage. Yeah, it was hilarious. Oh, it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> he had long ass dreadlocks. Yeah, I had long ass dreadlocks. Yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. no. Did the water get into the dreads? Well, I wouldn't imagine. Got into yeah. the dreads. Yeah. That's oh, every yeah. time. <laughs> 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 so you went like full Linda Blair with like Predator Linda Blair, just like, yes. okay. Like I put my hand in front of my face and it's and it like you know blew it went out out every direction. <laughs> it was wild. Oh, it was like a shower head chart. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I found it you know, I asked the question <laughs> and I did not think you would disappoint, and you didn't. You didn't. I'm going to be processing those two stories for quite a while now. Oh, I'm just going to sit here in the dark after after we sign off, and I'm <laughs> just going to think about that for a while. Um, oh, my goodness. Okay, so, I mean, unless there's anything else you guys wanted to say, there is a little segment that we're doing at the end of every show where we oh. put you in the Vox seat. Ooh. All right. All right, five questions. You guys can answer these together, you know, as a sort of, you know, super head thing, or you can answer them individually. So for people who do not know your music, sum up your music in five words or less. Oh, Jesus. Did That's jam? two. <laughs> Did jam. That's one word. Yes. Uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, jam I music. For the elevator. <laughs> For the elevator. <laughs> I don't know what elevators you guys are in, but they're cooler than the ones that I ride in. <laughs> elevator, metal music. No. Ele I don't want to be associated with elevator music for some reason. I don't, I don't know. I guess it gets played. I think, there, I think we all know why. Uh, I don't know. Jam music for other musicians. 
I don't know. I thought about that. Metalhead. But I don't like it. Yeah, 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 not even metalheads. Uh, Everybody, okay. Clearly, it's not just for metalheads. Five no. Words. No, jam. I'm a convert, so. Steak. Jam. Steak. You're so bad at this. Music. About, yeah, that's it. That's what I like. That's Good job, Dom. Ribeye. <laughs> Porterhouse. Strawberry. Mm. Strawberry. The jam is strawberry. I don't know. I always thought of it more as a raspberry. Our, our first look like, at the first set of song titles. They were all a pairing of meat and a jam or jam. That's right. Okay. All right. So we're gonna. All right. So I guess what I've learned today is that you can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it. Can, all right. Let me see. Let me see if I can sum up your music in five words or less. Um, eclectic. Metal jam for everyone. Why did you make us do it? You had it already. That was it. That, like, that's my power move is that I hand it over to you and watch you fail. And then I come in and I save the day. Uh, much like the branch, I have defeated you. So, um, the, all right. So there you go. There you go. I'm just defeated gonna, the branch. We got past the branch. He didn't, the branch didn't win. <laughs> all right so that's that's nice. question one question two what is your favorite thing about being musicians i mean making music is that's that would be it i that's my favorite thing about it this is literally wednesdays are my absolute favorite day of the week where i get two and a half hours really to play music and just zone out from every single thing in the world totally that's get that it. yeah totally creative. get that yep the creativity, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rhino, how about you? Same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that part is it's great. To, uh, essentially, I just love to play it. It's it's something that started passing the time, you know. But and then it became kind of like a higher power in a way. Mm -hmm. Just let things out through it, live through it. Yeah, I completely relate to that. It's kind of an oasis, right? Like from everything else that's going on, you just get in there and for a couple hours you clear your head and you just focus on that. I totally, totally get that. Okay, mm -hmm. so the flip side though, least favorite thing about being musicians. The technology. Fucking tuning. Tuning. Good Lord. Okay. Oh. Well, Dami, tune the drum. I have like 75 different screws I have to tune. I when I know. Tune. Your kid is kind of insane. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, y'all got like four, six strings. So yeah, technology, getting things to work. Yep. Just, yeah. Just right. Why we keep it super fucking simple. Mm -hmm. Can also fully relate to that. Um, technology is a great thing, but it is a double-edged sword, 100%. So, okay, so technology and tuning. Okay, I like that. Sure. All right, so you're going to hate this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And I, well, I'll let you change it up. It, has, it was going to be, if you could only listen to one song for the rest of your life, what would it be? If you'd rather pick an album or an artist, I'm okay with that too, though. You had to pick I one. Do I think album would be fair because one. Okay. Song, that's I know. It's a very hard. All right. Let's do album for you guys because I love you guys. I'll give you the whole oh freaking album. That is so tough. I think I, I, that's why it's the Vox seat, baby. Oh I wasn't going to be asking you easy questions. That's true. Song, I think I could probably listen to Deliverance by Opeth. Yeah, that's over and over weird. again. That's like a because it's like an eleven minute song, it twelve changes. minute song, and it just takes you on a ride. Um, album, probably uh, Leviathan by Mastodon. Oh, that's a beauty. Or, Look at uh, Chard coming in clutch with the answers. Not only album but song. I'm very impressed. Oh, yeah. I'm very impressed. Okay. And I like I like the reasoning too because you've got one song where it's it's dynamic right so you're you're not just listening to one thing i like that it's long so you know you, you got time you can yeah all right cool all right now you've, you've set the bar now all right guys don't screw it up don't screw it up don't screw it up <laughs> no pressure but get it right yeah otherwise you're kicked out you're gonna have to say floyd right for album you have to oh my god no. yeah actually Mm, I would probably go with the wall. Okay. Okay. Classic that's choice. That's a double disc. You get a little extra. And, okay. Uh, and if you get enough people, you can act out the movie on the island too. Just, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, that's true. And what, what's the thing? What's the thing where is it? Uh, is it? Um, oh no, I'm thinking of Dark Side of the Moon, where you can play it with uh, the Wizard of Oz. Oh, 
Oh, Wizard yeah. of Oz. Yeah, okay. We should try playing the wall over like, I don't know, um, like a Vince Vaughn movie or something and see if it lines up, you know. Nobody's right. tried it. We could, we could do that after the show. Have you heard of the movie Metropolis? I have. You can I have. almost any pop album to that movie. Really? The movie goes in 4-4 four, four time. Yeah, time. it's set to a time signature pretty much. It's pretty funny. Oh, wow. You know what? Okay, I can completely see it. And especially with all the visuals. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to at least do a little sample of that. That's pretty good. I don't know. I'll have to pick some really horrible pop album though, just to really drive it home, like a Carly Rae Jepsen or something. I don't. Know. I don't even know who that is. Why is that like that? Like the Kardashians is knowledge I acquired, and I don't know how. Like, did she sing that Friday? No, that was Rebecca Black. What did Carly Rae Jepsen sing? Call me maybe. See, okay. Here's the number. So he knows. So call me maybe. There you go. All right. We're going to have to do a cover of that and duet together, right? And at the very end, we'll just be like, <sighs> you know, like, yeah. Try your cheese. Don't call me maybe. There you go. All right. I kind of feel like that needs to be, you know, it's like you took Inspector Gadget. You had a little bit of the da -da 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 at the beginning. Oh, now you got to do a call me maybe jam just for me. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call in a, a favor on that one. So, all right, Dom, you've had extra time to think. Okay. Um, Song I have to go with Chard on an Opeth song. I just oh I didn't I'm do trying that part. To, yeah, you oh. did. So. It is also an Opeth song. To bid you farewell. There you is go. That, okay. Morning rise. Yeah, it's the one. Just it's the last one. It just kind of. Oh, okay. A little See, bit of everything. That's not the one I was thinking about from Opeth. It's on that same album, but I cannot remember the name of the song. But it's. Advent. Is it Advent? Probably. It's like 22 minutes long, yeah. and there's a part in that song where it literally stops and changes, and it's a totally different song halfway through, and it kind of covers everything. It's a great song. Such a good okay. album. Okay. So I'm, I'm getting the sense that that's a, that's a thing they like to do, that that's all three really of the really songs awesome. that you guys are describing all kind of have that. It's another one that people that aren't metalheads can actually really get into because they have such a beautiful soft side that mm -hmm. just can grab almost anybody. Yep. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. These, this is, this is, this is definitely. These are good answers. And you guys see, you complained, but you, you came up with albums and songs. So I don't even. Okay. So we, we have it. All right. This last question. It's the hardest. But again, you're in the box seat. So this is what you get. Hmm? I had an album. That <gasps> oh my god! I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's fine. I was done talking to you, but that's okay. I want to say something else, Dom. Go right now. I'll just go. I'm sorry. I can leave. Yeah. No, the album is, uh, the band is Native Construct, and Ooh. the album is, I believe it's called Quiet World. Okay. It is, it is an absolute masterpiece from start to finish. Not a Native second. Construct. Native okay. Construct. They made one album Good. in like 2012, and that's it. They were I'm a bunch of like out. music kids, and they made just this absolute banger. It's very theatrical. That, very theatrical, but it covers like every musical style. It is amazing. Like they go super heavy growls to beautiful singing to orchestra to wow. It's amazing. It's absolutely ridiculous. So yeah. Oh my gosh, I have so much new stuff to listen to after this interview. That's great. Okay. All right. Native. Native construct. Native construct. Okay. All right. I'm gonna have to put that in my squirrel brain and hope the hamster remembers it. But if not, I can always roll it back. So. <laughs> okay. Well, see. So you also had the album. So all right. Last question, you ready? This is the hardest one, okay? Take your time, take a breath. All right. Meditate a little bit. I gotta go pee. <laughs> well, that's actually very apropos because the question is, toilet paper over or under? Toilet paper over what? Over, over or, under? or under? Do you put your roll with the-, with the... Over. Or do you over. Put... Who puts it under? There are people. There are people, Rhino. If you want to call them that, there are people who put it. So you're all over, guys. Over. No, well, I know why he does. He, he goes under because of cats. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Cats are assholes. They will completely just wreck your toilet paper. Yeah. Okay. So you're an over guy at heart, but you're forced to be an under guy. No. Because of your cats. I'm under. I prefer He's to go so on the weird. under way. <laughs> I mean, if you, okay, so if you think about it, your toilet paper roll, if it's right here, it's rolling mm -hmm. out under, right? So you pull it out, you break your sheets off, and when you fold it, the quilts are on the outside. Whereas if you flip it the overway, you pull it, and you got to turn it over, then fold it, 
and do well. So you've added an extra step because it's supposed to be over because that's the design. Is it? Does it really matter? Like Char are Chard is is vigorously disagreeing with you here. I'm seeing head shaking and. I mean, I, I, I that's bolder. Counterpoint. Dash. Come bolder on now, dash. counterpoint. It's what? That's bolder dash. No, I think it's I, so like in the night when you're going to the bathroom and you need to get the toilet paper, like you you might be too tired to really like process the the you know how you do it. So you can just like. You know, just pat away it with your hand. Yeah, you can just paw at it, and it goes away. And just it like kind of like a cat. There you go. Okay. I don't do that, so I don't care. So oh, okay. I can, so I can put it on like normal people. Oh, <laughs> I think that's very prejudiced of you to say. Oh, Char. see now, breaking news: jam steak dissolves that's on account it. of it's toilet over. paper differences. That's it. I've destroyed the thing I loved. It's it, like Frankenstein's monster. I, I, I regret everything. Um. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. So oh, we uh, oh. we see then there there is um it's a little trouble in jam steak paradise then. You just created a rift. Good we, job. Right. We took, we I did. I did. Toilet paper from our bathroom. <laughs> we just don't we keep don't, toilet paper. We don't, we don't in the keep toilet paper. Yeah. In the studio. Oh no. Oh that's, no. That's, if you keep staked in the bathroom, I don't want to know anything about it. It's just, just a tenderloin. It's a tenderloin kind of night, you know? It needs to be replaced. Um, it's a little old at this point. Yeah, it's, it's getting a little little foul in well, the bathroom. Yeah. Dry aging for how many years? Dry aging now for about two dry years. So, yeah, I think right, it's right. more like Jam Stink. Jam oh! Stink. Oh, oh hey <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man. On that note, you guys are a friggin blast i love you so much your music is so good thank you for showing me how much i could enjoy a genre of music that i never thought i was going to be into i'm so proud of the ep you guys the video you've got so much in the works with belly dancers and super groups and that's just the stuff yeah. you could talk about god yeah. only knows what you couldn't so yeah. um it yeah it's uh it's it, we got we got to keep our eyes on jam steak Yes. And see what you do next. So we're going to be making moves, making boss moves in your not Celine Dion shirt. But I'll forgive you for that. That's okay. That's fine. Maybe, maybe he'll be next able to... time around. Maybe there you I go. Might have the, we'll be all the sure Phil Collins or Abba version. Ooh. Okay. All right. I would forgive you if that happened. Maybe oh, maybe sure. one of the next jams you can wear your Celine Dion shirt just for me, and I'll and I'll forgive you. So. Okay. Dom, Rhino, Char, Jamsteak, thank you so much for spending some time with me. Love you guys. Everybody go look them up everywhere. Look out for the link tree. We're going to put all the links um, in the description so you guys can go find them and enjoy them as much as I do and maybe go make yourselves a shirt because you have to have Jamsteak close to your right. heart. So Maybe that's our niche. You guys make your own style of Jamsteak merch. We want to see you. Want to yeah, put the expense on the consumer. That's, that's, yeah, that's People amazing. love that. As a fan, I can tell you right now, people love that. That's so happy to do that. Like, God, these fuckers, can they just make some merch? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was worth it. It was completely worth it. But yeah. But thank you again. 